friends. Today I'm going to talk about how to cut ads and possibly other content out of magazines and other publications. This is pretty basic, but I'll just show you what I do because people seem to be curious and what tools I use and stuff. So in terms of the ideal straight edge tool, I'd say that a ruler like this, which you can get in like the drafting or design department of an arts and crafts store is the best. This is supposed to have cork on the back, which fell off many years ago, but that um, is meant to keep it from slipping and that helps. You might also consider what size the publications you are using, what size the publications are, um, and get a bigger ruler or straight edge. This one is 18 inches as opposed to 12 inches or about 30 centimeters. Um, this is just another one that's kicking around. This is a two-sided one and it has a nice uh, slightly thicker straight edge. It's nice to cut with. You can also use a triangle. Some of these come with a metal edge on the side which is uh, good to so it doesn't get nicked. This one this one has a metal edge, it's hard to see. But these are handy because you can make sure you're at a right angle by lining it up. Um, and this is especially handy when you're cutting out ads that are, you know, already cut out and you wanna just snip individual ones out. You don't have to measure anything. This is another ruler I have. This is actually a, this is actually for quilting, I think. It's more like a sewing ruler, but What's cool about it is it has this little lip and I can hook this onto the edge of my cutting mat and slide it along uh, so that I get a straight edge and I can also sort of align it with my grid. Um, the downside is that it doesn't have a metal edge so it gets nicked up and that will eventually lead to cuttings that have little divots in it or um, if you're using this to roll, to draw, draw, <laughs> you're gonna get little waivers, which isn't good. So any of these things work, or just your standard ruler, I'd encourage you not to use necessarily a cheap plastic ruler because it's gonna get nicked up and wavy really quick. But any old metal one will do, or a straight edge, doesn't have to have markings. Um, if you have a drafting table, you might have moving uh, straight edge that goes across. If it's meant for cutting, that's great. I used to have that. Or you can use, to some degree, a guillotine uh, paper cutter or a sliding paper cutter. So those are all possibilities. Um, personally, I discard scissors as it's hard to get a straight line and it's more work and you'll get like trigger finger <laughs> or something eventually. Okay. Now I have on half of my desk here um, a self drawing cutting mat and it's pretty big because I do projects that involve cutting all the time or art stuff so this is great. You can get definitely get a smaller one than this. I would encourage you to get one because you will nick up your desk and go through a lot of scrap paper if you don't have one. Um, other tools that are useful can be a staple remover like this one and what I find more useful is one like this. These are not um, essential but they are helpful. And finally your knife. So I use X-Acto knives and this is my preferred X-Acto. It's a number 11 blade which is this sharp pointy one. There's other blades that will totally work. It's kind of personal preference. Um, just keeping it sharp is the main thing. This holder happens to have sort of rubber coating. I've had this one for decades and I don't know, it's become a favorite somehow. There's others around though. I have a plastic one somewhere. There's this one too. Um, probably others. But yeah, and then there's this kind, and these blades clip off. You take this, this is called an Ulfa knife, 
OLFA. You use this to break off little segments of blade as they get dull, and then you replace this whole thing when you need to. Um, this is also a fine thing to use, and people quite like this. Personally, just I guess the way I cut, I find this can be a little draggy. I use these more for um, cutting cardboard and or like chipboard for art project type things. And that's about it. And you should have some blades on hand because you want to change it frequently. So here's an example. Here's a super common sort of vintage magazine, a Saturday evening post from the 50s. I got this for, I, don't, I think, probably a dollar or two at a thrift store um, or sort of vintage store around the corner just for this demo. It's not something I normally buy to cut up for ads, but it will do just fine. <laughs> so I'm going to start by checking out how this is constructed. And I see that this is saddle stitched, which is a fancy way of saying stapled. Um, in the printing industry, they don't use like a giant stapler. They actually stitch it with metal. And that's hence the saddle stitch name. And so that's one thing to know. Um, it could potentially come in a different format like this. This is perfect bound which means that while it might be stapled inside somewhere deep inside, I don't even know if it is, it's mostly, oh, it is stapled, okay. But it, the cover is held on with glue around the outside edge. So essentially the difference is the staples are on the side inside and the cover is attached outside of the staples and is glued on the spine. So, if I were cutting this one up, I'd do it a little differently. I would actually take my big roller, where's my big roller? Take my big roller, and I would cut here on the outside of the staples. Unless that happened to be um, losing too much, like if it were printed in such a way that the margin wasn't big enough for that, then I would take the staples out and cut a little closer and so on and so forth. But for this example, we're gonna use this magazine, which has staples on the side. And you can, if you would like, start by removing these. And you can do that with this kind of tool, just kind of twist and then wiggle and it's out. And this will just uh, make it a little easier to deal with the magazine. So this is kind of an optional step. Sometimes it's easier when it's still holding together while you're working, but you know, try it both ways, see what's better for your process. So these come out pretty easily. There. Now it's free. And the way this is constructed, Oh, it's so old that it's kind of like still sticking in the staple holes. There might be some glue in there. I'm not sure. I doubt it, but I think the staple holes are just kind of, oh, there's a little glue on the cover. Okay, so that lets me get it really flat, and I can look through and look for good ads to cut out. So this one on the inside of the front cover might be good. Um, it's uh, for a car. It's full color. Uh, nice picture with like this kind of like modernist house, you know, sort of Frank Lloyd Wright-esque. Um, the problem is it's a little bit beat up. There's like this crease and the edge is a little bit gone and there's little holes in this here. Now I can cut it out and then trim that stuff. The holes will probably still be there, but not too bad. So that's a possibility. Um, this ad is for West Clock. Well, that's like a you know brand people know. I doubt this would be highly collected. It's black and white. Um, okay, here's a shell ad that has more promise. Um, gas and oil companies do okay. This one is kind of nice because it has a date, 1952, right here. 
Um, I don't know, I'd have to read it and see what's uh, what they're pushing here, but it's kind of an interesting image of this huge gas burner and people are cooking hot dogs on it. I don't know, maybe that's cool. So since we took this apart, we can sort of pull that part aside. We can't pull this off the cover because it is glued. I'm, I'm going to maybe show you a uh, more normal page first and we'll come back to that one. So let's look for some more ads. Um, we got a bunch of sort of half pages. Liberty Bell, Mutual Life Insurance. It's not that exciting. There's an Ansco film one. That, oh, this is a this is a two page spread. And if this were something really good, like a like a car ad or something that was very collectible, I could cut out these two pages and market them together as a spread. But I'm not going to bother for this. It's also a little weird because this is black and white and this is color, which all has to do with the economics of printing and selling ads. There's Metropolitan Life Insurance. It's got a kind of like cool madman vibe, but it's not that exciting. Okay, here's another gas one. This one is, this one seems better. It has a boxing glove and whatever. Sky Chief Gasoline Texco. I think that's, you know, a, obsolete brown, so that's good. Here's one that's another double page spread. And although this is probably pretty good and could sell if I pieced it together nicely and everything, I'm gonna just cut this one out because these are not like super high value items. And I'm gonna go with what's easier for me knowing in the long run that that is an economy just like selling the fancier, slightly fancier ads. So I can pull this out totally. And then I will just take my ruler and line it up and cut. Now you could line this up straight on your mat and use more of a straight edge ruler if you're more nervous about it. I'm okay with eyeballing it. Like I'm gonna look at, here's the center crease and I'll just scooch over like a couple of millimeters and then cut. Of course, I haven't changed my blade yet, which is essential. So we're gonna take that out and just like handy tip. When I throw these away, I either collect them in a jar for a long time and then throw away the jar, or if I'm just tossing it in the trash, I just put it in some tape so that whoever is emptying the trash, be it me or someone else, or the eventual people working on the trash truck, do not cut themselves. So that's going in the trash. And then we find the blades, which I know I lost. Here we go. So these, I buy these in packs of a hundred or more. Um, you can get off-brand ones or you can get exacto ones. And they just come in a box. Like I wouldn't buy the packs of just a few. I think they're totally expensive for what they are. So we just screw that in there and we line this up again. And then I'm gonna just make sure my blade is aligned on the edge of my ruler at the top and then just cut any straight smooth stroke all the way down. And there's our ad. So that's all there is to it. It's not a big deal. Um, and then we can go back and, you know, look for more pages like that that we want to cut out. Like, I don't know. It depends how much you're looking to sell for at a minimum. Some of these might be worth listing if you are not expecting much. Um, I try to just pick out the really good ones because this isn't really my main thing doing ads anymore. Like this may or may not sell. I mean, it's pretty cute. It has kind of like a rebus -y formula. It's nice illustration. I mean, of chicken soup. Anyway, so I can go through that some other time. And then if I come back to that ad that was in the cover, I think the best strategy for these First, I'm going to cut the cover off because it's glued in 
just to free up my situation here. So I'm gonna line it, line up my ruler with this um, gutter here. And then I'll move it away the tiniest smidge just so I don't run into the glue. And again, line up my ruler, my straight edge and cut like so. Okay, so now we have the cover. And like I said, it's kind of banged up. So I'm gonna trim this edge. And I like to turn the paper rather than turning myself or moving on the workspace to um, be able to cut from the direction that's most comfortable, which is top down, at least assume that's for everyone. So I'm coming in here in the margin as close as possible to the edge while removing the most nastiness. And um, you can line this up with your cutting board or measure or do whatever you want if you want to. I think it's totally fine to eyeball it. And you can also, if you don't cut too much, you can also correct if you need to. So I'm gonna cut this carefully. Sometimes paper that's ripped doesn't cut as smoothly. And so now we have a new straight edge on this. This corner we'll just deal with, it's okay. And then these little holes, they're just, there's not much we could do about it. Uh, I could also trim the bottom, which I may do, because there's this rip here. So why not? There's a big margin. That will actually get rid of one of these holes as well. So again, I'm just eyeballing it. And there. I mean, it looks a little stubby, but you'd have to think about it to know it was trimmed. So there's the cover. I'll put that aside. And then I'll come back to this page that has, um, actually this is a cute ad too. I don't know if it would sell on the brand, but it's a really cute illustration of a dog. So might see what we can do with that. It's like a, what's that? Tucker Spaniel. So this one's a little buckly because of the glue, but I'm just gonna crease it down and then take my straight edge again, sort of find where it's um, in good shape to cut and cut. Now there is a little, it was a little bit ripped down here and it didn't um, cut perfectly. So again, I might do a little trim. I mean, this is, you know, and there's also a rip here. This is a lot of fuss for 50s ads, but I'm just sort of showing you as an example. And you know, I will list these eventually. So, that's better. There's a little paper curl to not perfect up here, but it's good enough. I can photograph it sort of as flat as possible. If I were really crazy, I could uh, flatten it under some stuff or iron it, but I'm not going to do that. So that's how I cut ads out of big magazines. And another thing, and this is one of my sort of favorite things to do, is I like to cut ads out of playbills because playbills don't sell that well on their own. Sometimes they do if they're really old or for something really famous or with really famous actors and actresses in them. Um, this one, however, although it's really old, I think this is probably around World War One, so I'd have to look through it to find the exact thing. Looks like World War One-ish. Um, it's in bad shape. Like somebody pasted cardboard on the cover and something else that's been ripped off. There's writing on the cover, um, but who they saw, whatever this play was with. And so I might look through this and look for ads to cut. So baseball Braves, Boston Braves, not a team anymore, but um, that could be good. And like, don't worry that these are small. Like here's one for an Oakland Sensible 6 car. 
that's a good one even though this is black and white and if it were color or on glossy paper it would be better it's still it's still okay it's a full page even though it's a small page and i think i will cut this one out usually i'd go in order but for the sake of argument we'll cut this one out now one thing you can do um especially if your publication has a big margin and i wouldn't say that this one does but if it did you can actually just cut off the whole spine right here leaving yourself with a stack of pages which you can then go through and decide which ones to use okay so with this one it's really much the same procedure i'm gonna cut here but what i'm gonna do is turn it upside down so i can cut it the way I like to hold the ruler and the knife. And actually, I think we can cut through this whole thing. So now if you want it to be especially um, precise, you might want to change your blade at this point before doing that. I think this one has enough oomph left for sharpness as it were. So I'm just going to hold my ruler down tightly and cut until I hit the bottom. And now I have a whole pile of pages which I can go through. I think we're not going to, that's kind of nice, but it's all creased and whatever. So now I can go through and choose what I want to actually use these. So this one, um, the top, this is kind of interesting, but I think this one is going to be the winner here. And so what I'm going to do is often when they did these layouts, they use a rule in between ads to separate them. And I'm going to cut on that rule to start to break this top one out. So I just line my ruler up with the bottom of that rule and cut. And then so this is, go away. So this is kind of interesting. Um, so the margins are now unequal and there's this BF Keith theater program at the top. I'm not gonna worry about that. It kind of adds to the charm and these little ornaments add to the charm. Um, the fact that it's unequal bothers me, but I think it's better to leave it this way than to cut it really close and allow a person who you know, might want to frame this or something, maybe not this, but something in general. Um, so it would allow them to have a little more margin to attach it to a, a mat or a backing board or whatever. So I'm going to leave that as it is and call it done. And then I might flip through these other pages. So this one I liked and it's now its own thing. It has a little nick here, but Again, I'm gonna leave that. It will be visible in the scan I do to show it. Um, I got Boston Garter. I think that's cool, but I don't think that's only a third page. And I don't know that it would sell. We have some Bonnie Rye whiskey that might sell. I could cut that one out. At, when things are this old, and I'm assuming this is about 1918 or a little earlier, um, even these sort of black and white ads have a possibility of selling the hotel, um, Prince George Hotel, New York. I don't know. I don't think that's going to do much, but it might. Um, lighting fixtures. Here's a nice um, Victrola. These, I really hardly ever sell Victrola ads, despite how cool you'd think they might be. Um, maybe if they're really lovely and in color, they sell, but I don't know if I'll bother with that. Uh, so it depends where you are in your journey and what's in your store. Like a lot of these you could list. I don't know if I'm going to, um, this is fun. Like this is their phone number, 5,500 5, <laughs> in Boston. Butter and eggs. So. So a lot of these are more like local interest, New England Conservatory. Here's another whiskey one that might um, maybe be worth cutting out. Maybe I'll look into it. Pianos, again, highly advertised in these kind of things. And 
they don't seem to sell very well even though this is a you know very famous piano company chicory that's what glenn gold used so look on this one because i cut oh that's because this is the center so this was the center spread so when i cut it i might have lost a tiny bit i probably should have checked first to see if there was a good center spread but because i lost a little bit but this isn't something i would probably sell anyway although i like these illustrations a lot um Duran's candy. This one might be good. So you get the idea. Go through, look for the best ones. I kind of like that. I don't know. Some of these are on the edge. Wade has coffee and teas. This one, um, men's coffee is his breakfast. I kind of like that. It's on the back. Yeah, that's not very interesting. So maybe I'll cut that one out. <laughs> yeah, because these are like black and white and they're on um, it's these printy paper, they don't seem very glamorous, so it has to be something kind of exciting to cut. So again, I'll line it up with the rule that the, the people who laid it out used and just cut. And that's how I will scan it. So that's the basic idea of cutting... Um, cutting up ads and magazines. Pretty much the same deal with books, but you have to do a little bit more destruction of the spine first to get things out cleanly. I don't happen to have one that needs to be disemboweled at the moment, so we won't go there. And it's also less common, but um, that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it with my X-Acto knife. So hope that was helpful. Thank you and take care.